October 26, 1942. Two months after a severe baptism of fire near Guadalcanal, USS Enterprise is once again at sea, heading for a showdown with the Japanese fleet. 3,300 miles from Pearl Harbor, Enterprise rendezvous with sister carrier USS Hornet. The mighty carriers form one massive new task force, TF-61. The combined force of the two carriers, 136 aircraft, a battleship, six cruisers, and 14 destroyers rallies in preparation for the coming battle. Target, the Santa Cruz Islands. Objective, keep Henderson Field on Guadalcanal in American hands. Strategy, lure the Japanese fleet away from Guadalcanal and destroy them. But Enterprise and Hornet are outnumbered and outgunned. The Japanese flat tops can deliver the punch of more than 150 warplanes, with the backup firepower of nearly 40 surface vessels. But if the Marines are going to hold Guadalcanal, they'll need naval support. They'll need USS Enterprise. The fate of the campaign now rests on Enterprise and an outnumbered American task force. We don't pick our battles based on odds. Sometimes the battles pick you. We certainly don't run from a battle based on being outnumbered. You adapt your tactics to the scenarios at hand, but we don't run from a fight, and we didn't then. Radar operators on Enterprise report a flight of incoming Japanese dive bombers. Her captain directs the ship into a left turn an erratic course to deflect the enemy planes. As Enterprise turns, she opens herself up to another dive bomber. Before the gunners can react, it's too late. The plane releases a 550-pound bomb right over Enterprise. The bomb penetrates through the flight deck and out the port side bow. A dauntless part in the flight deck is blown off the ship and into the sea. Shrapnel hits the hull like a shotgun blast. 2,500 feet above, another Val dive bomber closes in and draws a bead on the Big E. The Val faces a firestorm of American flak and drops its payload. The direct hit penetrates the flight deck just behind the forward elevator and splits in two. Half of the bomb explodes in the hangar deck, destroying anything in its path. The second half hammers through to the third deck and kills 34 men very heart of the ship. Seconds later, a near miss tears a 50-foot scar in Enterprise's hull below the waterline and opens her starboard fuel tanks to the sea. Now that the dive bombers have had their shot at Enterprise, it's time for the dreaded torpedo planes. 16 Kate torpedo planes head right for Enterprise. Within minutes, they will have the Big E dead in their sights. And whichever way we turned, they were going to get us. So they thought. It's a classic hammer and anvil assault. Eight Kates will attack from starboard, while eight more come around the port side. If everything goes to plan, Enterprise will have nowhere to run. One by one, they come in low and release their warheads. Three torpedoes splash into the water ahead of Enterprise. Anxiously, nearly every man watching waits for the collision of the warheads. And the captain did some pretty deft maneuvering. Those three torpedoes slid to the uh, stern of the ship on our port side, so close that you couldn't look over the side and hardly see them. 800 yards ahead, another torpedo splashes as a cape drops its payload. The captain orders a full right rudder as the torpedo closes in. It's another close call. We evaded them all. That ship of ours could turn sharply. She'd lean way over, boy, you thought it was going over, but she could evade. In all, Enterprise dodges nine torpedoes in this single day of fighting. Enterprise is now the last of her kind, the only surviving ship of her class, and the only carrier left in the Pacific. The entire naval campaign now rests on her shoulders and the crew that mans her. So what did that do? That left the Enterprise. Then there was one. Enterprise versus Japan. 
think about it, that's pretty weighty. I think from a morale perspective alone, that was very, very significant. We're the last ones, and we're the only good target for the Japs. Who's going to get it next? Though the loss of Hornet and so many U.S. sailors is a staggering blow, the Japanese can't claim victory. The cream of their aviation wing, more than 130 veteran airmen, have fallen to the guns of USS Enterprise and Task Force 61. These are losses that Japan will never be able to recover. Once again, Enterprise has somehow survived yet another violent encounter with the Japanese Navy. Despite being outgunned and outnumbered, she and her crew have lived to fight another day. I think it's amazing to, to sense that the USS Enterprise survived all those battles. But then again, it just goes to show you about the discipline and the overall spirit of that crew. It had everything to do with the spirit of those fighting men that were actually on that ship.